Hi, my name is Yuen Suresh from Creativity Technology and Innovation Class. My group members are Ganyi Kang, Aneka Ashwin, Asman, Hokai, and Ng Kuan Yen. Today we will be presenting about the new technology for the company AAsia. I'll be starting off with the background. AAsia was established in 1993 and commenced operation in 1996. In 2001, Tune Air Sindran Bahad, which was owned by Tony Fernandez Company, purchased this airline from DRB Highcom. Asia never looked back after that. Asia, uh, Asia's first and main base is the low cost carrier terminal at Kuala Lumpur International Airport, while its secondary hubs are in Kota Kinabalu Airport, Senai International Airport, and Penang International Airport. Asia is well known as a Malaysian low cost airline and even Asia's largest low fare airline. The airline claims to have no admin fee but has some fees for services which are free on other airlines. Asia's slogan is now everyone can fly. Asia uh, reinforced its leadership position with two uh, remarkable milestones, flying over 500 million guests and uh, grew from two aircraft in 2001 to 226 aircraft at the end of 2018. From an airline with uh, two aircraft flying six routes in Malaysia in January 2002, Asia has sought in, uh, in the last 17 years to cover over 152 destinations in 22 countries. Today, Asia has employed more than 20,000 staffs uh, and with a market capitalization of just over 9.7 billion ringgit at uh, 17 July of 2019. Asia pioneered the cross-border joint venture in Asia, establishing Thai and Indonesian units uh, with bases in Bangkok and Jakarta. The airline also partnered with other airlines and investors to create ventures in the Philippines, India, and Japan. Asia's uh, extensive domestic and regional network includes services within Malaysia and to China, Southeast Asia, and the subcontinent. Now we're passing on to Esmond. Okay, so my name is Esmond, and I'll be doing a short analysis on Air Asia. So I'll start with Air Asia strengths. As you all know, AirAsia is a budget airline, so their prices are very affordable, making uh, everyone, allowing everyone to fly. Um, their next strength is extensive coverage over Asia, specifically Southeast Asia. They have flights that go from to almost anywhere in Southeast Asia. And the third strength is they're an established brand name. You can go to anyone anywhere in the world and they'll almost everyone will know what AirAsia is. Their weaknesses are, however, uh, service quality due to them being a budget airline they have to make some sacrifices which is in their services and their next weakness is that they outsource maintenance so for their week uh, monthly checkup for their airplanes and if there's anything wrong with their air airplane they have to outsource it to get it fixed this is this will be very costly for them and where uh, this will be very costly for them whereas having it their own maintenance will be cheaper which is something they should do the opportunities for Air Asia is uh, with RMCO. Now the government has, has allowed domestic travel, so uh, they should be they should take advantage of this time to start flying people around Malaysia. And another opportunity is since due to coronavirus, um, Malaysia Airlines and Air Asia and all airlines around the world have been struggling to cope. And due to this, Air Asia and Malaysia Airlines are planning to uh, merge together. This will help Air Asia a lot because Malaysia Airlines is a high quality uh, airline. And ancillary services, this is like everything, all the profit that comes from uh, excluding uh, the flight ticket. So such as like baggage and food. Uh, as you can see, they had a 26% increase from uh, to 686 million in 2019. So you can see that they have a lot of revenue coming in from ancillary services. Uh, the threats for AirAsia are COVID-19, which is uh, threatening all airlines, all travels, all hotels all over the world. Um, they also have high competition in Southeast Asia as well as the ABA uh, in Southeast Asia uh, because there's a lot of budget airlines around Southeast Asia and the last threat is safety concerns and fear of flying. This is, in general, there are a lot of people that are scared to fly and who are worried that something will happen when they fly. So next I'll pass to Kari. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the Tesla. So for the political, uh, flying outside Malaysia has been a challenge to Asia. So this is 
based on a bilateral agreement affecting the way in which a pan-Asia budget carries. So landing and navigation charges are expensive in major destinations including Beijing, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Bangkok. So there are also no cheaper secondary airports, hence a crisis for the airline. So this is a worsen by the fact that uh, airline market is regulated by the bilateral air rights agreement. So for the economic factors, AirAsia is a low-cost airline and it faces stiff competition from Malaysian airline. So the good thing is that AirAsia offers cheap flight services and highly affordable tickets that attract many clients in the region. So Asia in theory has the most attractive ingredients making a budget airline successful. This is enhanced by the fact that the region is wide and densely populated. Additionally, the economic growth in the region and improved cost of living has empowered many Asians to work flights to different destinations, hence this is an advantage to Asia Airlines. So many passengers in Malaysia are very reluctant to board no flights for long hours. This is the social uh, impact. So the longer the routes, the fewer prices conscious the client become. So they do not want to be on long flights, especially with limited or no flight no in-flight services. Asia wanted to be an airline that operates an average man basis in the shape of being in a position to pay for flights. So individuals who couldn't think of flying are therefore attracted to Asia. So additionally, um, Asia strongly commits to safety first following past previous cases of several acute respiratory syndrome that has kept many people from flying. Asia therefore complies with all regulated measures that are consistently adhere to high standards. So this ensures safety for all passengers and airline staff. So next I will pass to Ken Yuan. Hi, I'm Ng Ken Yuan. And now let me share to you the other three parts of our macro environment pastel factors. Firstly, I'll discuss about the technological factors. Humans are easily to be impressed by something which they did not seen before or something that will discover their mindset. Bringing new technology on board or even in other customer service departments will enhance the customer experiences which brought to them a better image for, memory, for Asia, towards Asia. For an example, AI, Artificial intelligence is the best application that can be introduced in airline industries such as Asia. It is not only an onboard entertainment to entertain the customers, it can also be a best helping hand for Asia in different departments. Next slide. Besides, it is the legal factors. Intellectual issues and data privacy concerns of the customers are always the main problem that faced by the Asia. These two problems will not only lead to company profit losing, as it will cause the customers to lose confidence towards them. At the end, they would not be able to compete with the other competitors in the same industry. Last but not least, environmental factors can be one of the Asia's major concerns. It would be better if Asia are able to achieve environment uh, sustainability. This is to reflect the environment friendly spirit of their company to the society as people will believe in and have confidence on those who love the environment and trying hard to prevent pollution in order to retain the natural resources. Asia will then gain more positive reputation from this and it will directly improve the image of Asia which will lead to increase in engagement with those potential customers. And that's my part. I'll pass to Anelka. Thank you. Hi, I'm Anelka Ashwin and I'll be talking about the current business model of Asia. Asia is a low-cost career and the Asia's business model centers at low-cost philosophy which requires the business to be lean, simple, and efficient. Next up, I'll be, I'll be speaking about the product scope of this company. 
uh, Asia product scope is providing clients with the choice of customizing services without compromising on quality and services. This means that the customers will be able to customize according to their own preferences. The next one will be the products can be short haul flight, long haul flight, hotels, tours, career, cargo, entertainment, and online shopping. Next, please. The vision of A Asia is to be the largest low cost aligned in Asia, in Asia and serving the 3 billion people who are currently underserved with poor connectivity and high fares. The missions for Asia, the first one would be to create a globally recognized ASEAN brand. Then the second one would be to be the best company to work for whereby employees are treated as part as a big, of a big family. And to attain the lowest cost so that everyone could fly with, can fly with Asia, as their slogan says so. And also the last one would be to maintain the highest quality product, embracing technology to reduce costs and enhance, enhance the service le levels of the company. Next, please. Okay. The current business of business model of Asia would be to provide low fare but no frills, which means that there would be no frequent flyer miles or uh, airport launches in exchange with these low fares. And this would be able for guests to have their choices to pay for their own in-flight meal, snacks, drinks, or even their additional luggage. Asia also of offers internet sales or by call centers and majority, the bulk of the sales would be, can be done via the airline's website, which is www.asia.com. And also uh, the payment will be made through debit cards, credit cards, and also online banking. While for call, center, call centers, as I mentioned, it would be able to purchase, customers would be able to purchase tickets via the telephone. And also from the research that I've done, both methods that I mentioned here has been the most effective distribution channel which can be made customers more convenient. Thank you so much. I'll be passing to uh, Nikang next. Thank you, Anelka. I am Gan Yikang and I will be talking about the, the innovation that we are going to propose to the AASIA company, which is Artificial Intelligence AI. As mentioned by Esmond in the SWOT analysis, the weaknesses of AASIA airline is their services quality. So we propose an AI system to overcome this weakness. AI is a machine that simulates human intelligence by thinking like human and imitating human actions. Next, I will explain why we propose this innovation for Asia Airlines. Nowadays, we know that we know that the crisis of COVID-19 has a huge, huge impact to every country. In China, the government implemented petrol robots to fight COVID-19 crisis. It is because there are many people travel around the world, so this can help the airlines to detect who are affected by coronavirus and also can reduce the risk of being affected by coronavirus between staff as well as customers. AirAsia can replace their staff with AI robots to overcome the problem of stops being rude towards customers. Other than that, this AI system has a social distancing alert system by sending notification to customers' mobile phone to stay in a safe social distance between each other in order to reduce the, the affection of COVID-19. Last but not least, AI can be a language translator. It can increase the efficiency to service foreigners that have difference of languages. Besides, it can also reduce conflicts with customers when they doesn't have any issues with languages. Moving on, I will talk about the steps to implement the innovation. There are five steps to do. First, the company has to identify the opportunity for the, for the innovation that can get benefits from it. Second, they have to determine which targets or goals that they want to achieve. 
Third is to test the potential of innovation. Companies have to test the features and quality of the product or service before launching. Fourth is to build support for the innovation. After they do the test, they need to keep invest to improve the quality of the innovation based on the result of the test. Lastly, companies should make improvements by learning the positive and negative impacts towards customers and markets in order to satisfy their demands. And this is our reference. Now, we will talk about our own learning outcomes individually. For me, in this group assignments, I have learned about the importance of innovation for every domain industry. This brings many benefits and help them to stay competitive in the future. So companies should make improvements to follow up with the trends. Now, I will pass it to Robin. Thank you, Ganika. Uh, hi, Ravin here. From this assignment, the learning attributes I have gained is pretty significant. What I have learned is to present new potential business strategy and identify the source, uh, sources of creativity, technology, and innovation opportunities. Thank you. Now I'll pass to Esmin. So what I've learned from this group assignment, I've learned two things. Uh, I've learned how important technology and innovation are to businesses and how different types of innovation can apply to companies. Uh, next, I'll pass to Kari. So for the learning outcome, um, AHA should maintain the nucleus value and provide better service with low cost barriers in long term. So AHA operates in country, wide diverse cultural aspects and languages. This is because its staff embraces cultural diversity, making it easier for the company. Next, I will pass it to Gen Yuan. From this group assignment, I've improved my communicating and presenting skills. This occurs when me and my group members are discussing about the assignment flow and we all have to give out our opinion. It is also a new experience as we need to learn how to present our slides in front of a webcam. As we all know that we are currently suffering from COVID-19 crisis. Through this group assignment, it has improved my extra knowledge on creativity and innovation too. I learned that a good innovation is indeed for a company to grow bigger and stronger. Thanks to Dr. Rakesh who guide us step by step in this group assignment in order to make sure that we are able to do it in a proper and better way. And next I'll pass it to Anelka. Hi, I'm Anelka here. So uh, throughout this whole assignment that I've done, I have noticed that uh, how important is it to have uh, technology the innovation in this current business field that we are into. And we also have to be very creative in whatever we do to be able to market our product or our service. And I also, like for example, for our Asia product, I have also learned that uh, we have to innovate. We have to do something like using an artificial intelligence to help boost the current uh, sales and also for the success rate to be more, to increase and also lesser complaints from customers. And I also, I've also noticed that uh, I've improved my research skills in order like for my part I did on the business model and I found out the business model of Asia and also the complaints that they were facing and how to improvise it and to make it better. Thank you so much.